What is up everybody? Welcome back to a brand new video. And today we are talking about woodwinds, all about woodwinds, uh, my personal favorite woodwind library specifically. And this is the second part of four in my um, sample libraries you need to know about series. So, uh, and if you know me, if you know my channel and my workflow, I tend not to um, spread myself out too much in terms of the number of libraries I have. I tend to like to, uh, you know, purchase a, a certain number of libraries that I think will cover many of my needs um, or workhorse libraries, if you will, and stick with those as much as possible. And then, you know, if I do need an additional texture here or there, then I'll consider um, picking up another library for that purpose. But for the most part, you know, I write the Disney um, kind of romantic style music, um, orchestral music. So I don't really need articulations that are really out there or ones that are very uncommon. I find that those can be a little bit distracting and a little bit overwhelming. So the total number of libraries we'll be covering today is four. However, I'm going to consider it three just because one of those is an expansion library. Okay. So anyway, let's get into it. Um, library number one is from CineSamples and this is Hollywood Wins or Hollywood Wins. You can think of it either way. Um, but this library is really, really cool because it was recorded at, um, at a church, I believe. And um, it's entirely comprised of ensembles. So you don't have any solo instruments in this library. Actually, let me go down and show you what it comes with. So Hollywood Wind is here. It has keyboard patches where you can actually play the woodwinds on the keyboard, um, you know, note by note. You have scales and rips, which are pre-recorded phrases, and they have different types of scales here, as you can see, and textures and effects. And these are also pre-recorded types of phrases. So the, um, it, it's quite a flexible library, you know, if you consider that it's all ensembles, um, the content that it comes with is quite impressive. So first of all, let's start with a 2D patch. Essentially, it's just the ensemble playing together and it's mapped out across the entire keyboard. So you'll see the range, the playable range is kind of from this low B right there, or that B flat all the way up to a high C where the piccolo and the flute are playing together. So if I just play a couple chords here. You hear it kind of has a smooth and creamy sound to it. So it's, it's really beautiful. And the ambience of the hall is, is quite nice as well. Um, there's also a staccato version. So right here, and you can also uh, use that as well. They also have what they call legato. I believe it's scripted legato. I don't think it's true legato, but um, yeah, it, it basically lets you play one note and then it releases the previous note, which is cool as well to have that function. Then they also have major and minor triads. So just to show you here, um, these are all of the major triads down here and the minor triads up there. So so if you're, if you're trying to write like chromatic median stuff, then this is very, very useful to have. Um, you know, playing a bunch of major triads in a row result in non-diatonic sound. So same with the minor chords out here. So these types of patches are really cool for sketching because you can get your uh, productions up and running really quickly and the, the tone quality is great and you don't really have to worry about orchestrating individual instruments. Um, chordal tremolos, I use these quite a bit. So they're basically like half step um, chords going back and forth. Then here is the staple of this library, and you hear this in way too many commercials nowadays. Um, just have a listen to this. So, for good reason, it's used a lot. I mean, it's like, a, <laughs> it's a wonderful library. It's um, a really cool patch. And this was really like the first of its kind to really have the recording quality of this scale and um, to have those scales mapped the way they are. A lot of libraries picked up from this idea after that. So um, yeah, really cool sound and I use it quite a bit, but it's important not to overuse it because it's, 
you know, it, it, it gets very easy, easily identifiable, I should say. Then we have tonal rips. So it's pretty cool. I think you can change the key as well. Yeah, that's cool. So let's say A major, they're going to land on an A at the end. <laughs> cool. All right, let's hear one motif, and this would be in the textures and effects area. So, like instant Disney, right? And let's change keys. Time, we're gonna go to A flat major. <laughs> this is the closest you'll get to considered cheating, you know? But if you're out of ideas and you need some inspiration, it's there for you. So all in all, I love this library. It's it's a really great inspiration starter. Sparker, I should say. That that's a better word. Cool. Then moving on, um, Cinewin's core is also from CineSamples. This is my second library of choice. And the focus is completely different. This is actually on the solo side of things. So, so uh, if you just take a look at the patch listing, we have piccolo, flute, oboe one, oboe two, clarinet, bassoon, and full ensemble. Again, more like a sketching tool as well. So let's have a listen to the piccolo. Um, here's a few short notes and then some long notes. So just a beautiful tone of the Sony scoring stage there. And if you want to increase the speed of the legato and maybe make it less intense, you can do that as well for a more natural sound. Cool. So just keep in mind the piccolo is a very like harsh type of tone. It's very um, shrieky at the top. So that's why usually only one piccolo is needed in the orchestra. Then we have the flute. Uh, this is a beautiful sounding instrument. Let's move on to the oboe two. So according to like the Dennis Sands mix or the full mix here, as you can see, um, it has a very full bodied sound and it, it really works as an upfront centerpiece in your mix. So that, that's the main difference between Cinewind's core and Hollywood wins. Um, I guess the biggest one for sure is that, you know, Hollywood wins is ensembles and Cinewind's core is soloist only. So that is of course a big difference in workflow, but you just want to consider the tone of the instruments as well. So Cinewind's core has this really full, bodied sound that, you know, really lets the instrument shine when they're in a soloist context. 
So I think that was the intention there. Uh, let's do the clarinet really quickly here. So yeah, I was just playing these uh, red key switches down here, which activates um, half step and whole step trills. So you have that option as well. Of course, that's really, really needed in a woodwind library. I don't think the clarinet has any glides though. That would be a cool uh, addition for this instrument. Uh, bassoon, finally. Just so you know, the woodwinds, or all the instruments really, come with a poly legato function. So if you're trying to play multiple legato lines at the same time, you don't have to open up a separate patch. You can literally just come to the settings page here, click poly, and then if I play, oops, then transition to the next two notes. You can hear both notes go to their respective notes, but with the legato transitions in there as well. So very cool. All right, and then finally the full ensemble articulations. Again, perfect for sketching purposes. really nice sound and of course you want to tweak the mod wheel as you're doing this but uh, that's the idea of Cinewin's core and then um, the last library that I have for woodwinds is probably the most comprehensive of the three and it's also the most um, versatile I would say as a result so this is Berlin woodwinds and I'm using the main collection 3.0 but they also ship with um, the legacy 2.2 version as well, in case you're looking for the original samples. So um, here they have all the articulations laid out and there are a few others that are not loaded into contact here, all these different ones. Um, but let's just go through a few of them and hear what the flute legato sounds like. You know what, let's turn up the volume on this bad boy because they are quite soft. Cine samples libraries are very loud in comparison to the Berlin stuff, so.
So just a quick mention for the double tongue and the triple tongue. It's really interesting because basically when you press a note and then release, that's when the repetition occurs. So you press, the note comes out, and when you release, the repetition is activated. So depending on how quickly you release, um, that's how quickly the repetition or the double tongue and the triple tongue as well will activate. So really cool. Let's hear the Alta Flute. This is a new addition to the Berlin series Woodwinds for Revive. So have a listen to this. All right, moving on to the oboe. So I think they re-recorded the oboe for uh, Revive. So here is what the oboe sounds like. And finally, the bassoon. Here we go. All right, so let me just quickly mention Berlin Woodwinds, um, the core libraries, and actually most of these libraries here, all of the libraries really, are recorded with a classical or more film, classical film score type of sound in mind. They're not necessarily recorded for soloist purposes because a soloist has so many expressive qualities that they can really put into their instrument. Um, so these instruments in the main library are a little bit more, I don't want to say flat, but they, they don't have as much maybe variety as like a dedicated soloist library might. So this library is really good for if you want to write your individual woodwind parts, but you want them to play as an ensemble. Okay. Now, the reason I mentioned that is because I also have um, the Berlin Woodwinds expansion library, BNC, and these are recorded as soloist libraries and it are recorded as such. So for example, here is the flute and note that it's recorded in a dry studio with an impulse added afterwards for reverb. So here's what the solo flute sounds like. Okay, a couple little things to note here. And of course, we know that it's drier. 
for sure, but it just has a more expressive sound than the original flute from um, Berlin Woodwind's main did, you know? So that's one really cool thing. Uh, the second thing is that the sustains actually end by themselves and they actually are not if indefinitely looped. Um, so I think that's because they, they wanted the performers to very naturally come off of their notes whenever they felt like they wanted to. And that really ends off a phrase very naturally instead of having an infinitely loop sustain. So then it tempts us to write in a way where like woodwind players could hold their breath forever, which is just not possible, you know? So anyway, um, that's something that's a really cool feature of this library is that there are no looped sustains. They're either de uh, crescendos or decrescendos or just, you know, regular sustains there. Here are some staccatos. Okay, let's move on to the solo alto flute. And then we'll move on to the solo oboe, which is really like the highlight of this library. So here's the solo alto flute here. You'll notice that the alto flute in this library is very passionately recorded with a lot of vibrato. So that might be something you want, maybe not. Um, but it, you know, it's a very romantic type of sound. So really cool. And then here's the oboe. So I think you would agree that that's one of the best virtually sampled oboes that you've ever heard. Um, when I first heard it, I was just blown away. And I still think nothing really holds a light to this oboe, with the exception maybe of like Nucleus's oboe. But it's a wonderful instrument and a wonderful library in general. So there are expansions B and C. B is for the more uh, higher instruments like piccolo, uh, flute, alto flute, you know and the clarinet, and then the expansion C is like bassoon, contrabassoon, or bass clarinet, you know, those types of instruments that are on the lower end of the register. So really cool. Um, those are my go-to woodwind libraries. For the most part, I do stick with Berlin woodwinds the most when it comes to individual part writing. If for an exposed solo, I'll go with expansion B or C and Cinewind's core, and then for some ensemble patches and for um, you know, runs and, and really cool textures, you can't beat an authentic sound of a pre-recorded phrase. It's just not going to happen, you know? So a library like Cine, or sorry, Hollywood Winds <clears throat> by Cine Samples is really a godsend in that regard because there's really nothing else like it on the market. And they've really dominated that, that area with this library. So thank you so much for watching. I hope uh, this little breakdown of my favorite wood, woodwind libraries helped you. Um, if you're curious to know more about the other type of libraries that I use and my other recommendations for different styles of libraries, I put together a completely free guide on my favorite orchestral libraries. Um, simply click the link in the description box below and you can access it for totally free. You can use it for your next purchases, You know, take a look at what my personal recommendations are, why I use them and um, just what I like about certain libraries over other libraries. So if that's something you're interested in, it's absolutely free. Just click the first link in the description box. And let me know what kind of woodwind libraries you prefer to use. If you use companies like VSL or East West or Spitfire, um, I don't own any of those. I am very happy with the ones I have, but I would love to know why you use your certain libraries and what you enjoy the most about them. And we can talk a little bit about, you know, some similarities and differences between the libraries. That's always fun. So anyway, thank you very much for watching. I'll see you in the next part where we're going to talk about the brass section, kind of like the powerhouses of the orchestra. And that's going to be a lot of fun as well. So I'll catch you in that video and take care, everybody. Bye-bye.